Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's just let's just wave our hands to God. Oh Father, we thank you. Faithful God, we give you praise. We wave our hands to you in adoration, in surrender, in appreciation of that which you have done and what you're doing, unfolding to us a future that you have already guaranteed for us. Father God, we so thank you. Thank you, God, for your presence in this household today, O oh God. Thank you for your presence here with us in this, in this, in this gathering, O oh God. Father God, we ask that the power of your Holy Spirit opens us, O oh God, and bring us in tandem with that which you have prepared ahead for us in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, we thank you, we bless you. Let there be, O oh God, the fullness of your blessings and your reward over our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just appreciate the choir for an awesome, awesome ministry. Amen. Amen. What a what an awesome time, what a, what a song, and what a ministry. And I pray that that song will be evident in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say to me, that song will be evident in my life in the name of Jesus. You not just hear that song and hear the melody. What we pray is that the spirit of that song will be written upon the tablet of your heart. And the fulfillment of it, you will see it in every area of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, you know, saying hello, when you begin to say hello to joy, to peace, and to strength, and to all those wonderful things that God has promised you, that means you're seeing correctly. Amen? You're seeing correctly, and then when you say hello, you're embracing the future that God has already promised for you to see in the mighty name of Jesus. This month of February, this month of our anniversary, 21 year anniversary, and I want to salute and congratulate all of you, um, seconding what Pastor, I mean, Apostle Tony has just done earlier on and Pastor Shego. I really want to appreciate you all. I thank God for the joyful experience of joining with you in faith with God. I know that um, none of us will have chosen one another. Uh, many of us, if, if you were to choose me, you would have said, uh, can I have a second choice? But you know what? God just put us together in this port. Amen? And we are here together and we are journeying along. You know what? God is working out something and we know that it's going to end in joy, in peace, and in the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? I want to appreciate, especially Pastor Tony. Oh, Pastor Tony, thank you so much for that beautiful um, testimony that you gave on behalf of all of us. That is how a mother does. And you, you gave that so beautifully well crafted. And my prayer is that the heart of gratitude you have on behalf of all of us will continue to glow every single day again and again and again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. The theme of our month of February is building the future. We're going to stay on building the future. Because you see, um, Canon Yemi came last Sunday and he came and he beautifully crafted for us and shared with us a word in due season of the things that we ought to pay our minds to the things that we ought to give attention to if we want to build a future. If we want to, as it were, bring about the future that we are looking at 
in front of us. Now, what I want to use today to do is to perhaps ask you, what future is it that you want to paint? And I'm, I'm titling my message, Painting the Future. Amen? Today, I want us to, together, paint the future that we want to see. Because you can only build what you have already set in place to see. If you want to build a house, an architect is your first visit. And that architect will ask you, what do you like to build? And then you tell them, and then they will bring about a design or series of designs. And they will tell you, this can work, this can work, and this can work if you need to take some planning permission. And then you take the planning permission, and you will be able to you'll be allowed to build it. Then you can start building. There must be a future that you have already seen. That you have already pictured before you start to build. If you build before a picture, you must be ready to stick with anything that you have. And whatever you have might not be good enough for you. Or might not serve the purpose that you need. Amen? So painting the future. The choir so nicely used that song as if perhaps I, I didn't even tell them the theme of this of this message. But God, of course, the Holy Spirit must have helped them to go on ahead and give us in the wordings of that song what the future that you and I should be embracing look like. What future do you want to embrace? What future do you want to Give your commitment to, to embrace. What future is it that interests you that will make you commit to following God and say that you are a believer and a follower of Jesus for the rest of this year? As we speak, somebody is saying to themselves, Jesus is not worth it. But what is it that you can see in the future that tells you that my Jesus is worth every commitment that I have for him? Painting the future. We listen to those beautiful testimonies and I was saying to Apostle that I remember the Sunday Emmanuel came to church and heard that we were fasting. And he said, oh, it's only about, I think it was about 10 days more before the fast finished. And he said, oh, um, I think he was sitting there somewhere around here. I was saying, oh, I don't know whether, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether I, I could still join in to fast because, you know, everybody's gone. And he said, I'm just going to join anyway. And he joined fasting. Now, I'm not saying that it's the fast that saved him. But you've got to join some things when you are led to do. There are some things you don't need to think about. Some of the times, the things that stop us from God is our little pokey brain. Because we think about God and everything our God can do in that our pokey little brain and we fix God inside of it and we think that is all that God is. My God is bigger than my brain. Can you say that confidently? If you cannot say that your God, the God you serve, is bigger than your brain, you've got an issue. Actually, you need a deliverance. Because what our brain tells us to do is to analyze God, contain him, and try as much as possible 
to see everything that he has said, that he's saying that, and he will say in the figment of the imagination that our brain tells us. And that becomes a stumbling block. This morning, I'm going to ask of you to please loosen up and give God a chance. Give God a chance. Unbox God in your brain. Unbox him from the containments that you have put him. Unbox him and allow him the liberty of leading you even though what you are interpreting as the leading doesn't seem to add up. Part of unboxing God is still following God and allow him to lead you even when it doesn't seem to be making sense. And many a times God doesn't make sense. It only makes sense when you unbox him. God only makes sense when you allow him or when you allow your brain to know that there is a boundary that God does not fit in and is in the boundary of our imagination. Amen? To all families and friends at Kingsborough, 21st year anniversary celebration today is big. And like you have heard, of course, we are officially could be classified as adult, matured adults, physically, in nature, and abilities. I mean, at the age of 21, there's some things like Pastor Shego nicely described. There's some things that you'll be allowed, you, you're allowed to do. If you do them, nobody will leave, you know, complain about you. They might say, they take it very well, but, but you must also be ready to face the consequence of everything you do at that age. However, being old enough, being matured enough, being physically nurtured enough, being in a position to take your responsibility alone is not the only way of measuring or foresee maturity and adulthood before or when they come. We also must be in a position, there are some essential background and fundamentals that are supposed to have been developed so that if they are not seen in you at adulthood, it raises concern. I think that's what Pastor Jack was trying to allude to. It was as if he's read my note. If those things are not there when you are an adult, it gives people around you or it should give people around you concern. Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 4 will be my text that I'm going to focus on this morning as we paint the future. And this was Jesus. Jesus gave a summary of his mission here on earth. He stepped onto the scene and has been, as has been prophesied, this was Isaiah, prophet Isaiah prophesied many years before Jesus came about and said this is what Jesus will be saying he's been sent to do. And he said, the spirit of the Lord, of the sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim the ca that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. Now this was Jesus stating 
one after the other through the prophecy many years ahead what his mission was going to be. He gave the summary of his mission and then he proceeded in verse 3 and 4 to paint the future of what is going to be happening or what will be seen where the, the future of those who believe in him will live in. Let's read that. To say that, you see, if you follow me, if you belong to me, this is what your future will look like. For all those who mourn who follow him, he was saying, which is in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord had, has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them through the, I mean, though they have been deserted for many generations. Amen? In the same way, in the same way, you and I, whatsoever goods or services that you provide, you must be clear of what your mission is with that good or service and what difference that goods or service will make to people who patronize you. Is that not clear? Yes. If what you manufacture is toothpaste, you manufacture toothpaste, there must be what the toothpaste will do. Is it going to make your teeth turn green? If it makes it turn green, then it, what is that connection of that green nature of teeth? And then what benefit is that going to add to the lives of the person who uses your product? Every one of us must be clear, made it clear, what the mission is. Every mission must be backed up by the difference that it will make in the lives of people who follow their vision. So, what I'm saying this morning is that there is a difference that this vision is meant to make in your life, in my life. In the same way that the vision of Jesus, the mandate that Jesus shared, has a result or had a result that it was meant to showcase. And let's just look at it very closely. Let's look at the mission of Jesus. Jesus' mission. Number one. In that scripture, Jesus said, my mission is, number one, given to me by the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. That is the source of my vision. I didn't manufacture it. I didn't make it. I didn't give it to myself. It was given to me by God. It says the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, is upon me. That's the source. Every one of us needs to examine where is your vision or your mission coming from. Is this your desire? Is it your long term something that you have just always wanted to? I remember when we were going to get married, they just slips in. I was saying we'll, <laughs> I was saying we'll remember this. She had always had the way she was going to enter church. The song that would be sang, the way it was going to happen. And then when we're doing our counseling, marriage counseling with our pastor then, the pastor said, ah, this is a, this is a Christian church. You can't, you can't go in like that. You can't. And she looked at me as if, ah, let's tell him that that's what we want. I said, we can't. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a pastor. We can't. You can't. From that onset, we had to make a decision. To cut the long story short, she had to give way. I said, so why did you want to go into church like that? She said, that is 
from when she was young, she had always thought about her wedding day. This was the song, and this was how she was going to go into church. Her pastor then was Pastor Tony Rappel. She can't, he canceled it without even blinking. And he didn't say it nicely, to even say it. You, know, you, you don't you go understand, you don't, you don't appreciate me as, a, as your pastor. Pastor Tony. <laughs> pastor Tony said it in a very nasty way. Nasty. And even, well, good nasty. Lovingly nasty. <laughs> but you see, me, I will still try to say it to you in a way that, you know, and then, then you go and ask, ask her. And say, ah, this is what Pastor said. I don't know whether what he's saying is. Well, anyway. So, anyway, let's, let's leave that. Where is your vision coming from? Who gave it to you? Where did you find it? Is it the vision you read in Mins and Bones? You know that? that is it the vision you read in, you read in some of, where is it, where, where did it originate from? It's key. If God gives you a vision, he will sustain that vision. If your vision came from a burden, we talked about burden last Sunday, but I mean, uh, can you hear me? Talked about burden. If the burden was a, a burden from the heart of God, he will ensure that that burden remains a center part of his heart. And he will, your marriage, your children, at the upbringing, the reason of your children must be as a burden from the heart of God. He didn't just give you, say, have children. Some people are having children now not because God wants them to have children. They're having children because of social security. Hello? They're having a lot. A lot. I know why they're having a lot. Because they want the pay packet. Look, they are waiting for you. Be having them. Be having them. Don't just have children because you want to have children. Because it's more than that. What is the source? Why are you going to school? Why are you studying? Why do you want to have those degrees? Jesus announced clearly. Said the spirit of the living God is upon me. And if I look that and visualize it with the vision of kings, bro. We say we have a God-given mandate. We know this vision that we've been running for 21 years, I can tell you, is beyond the figment of my imagination. Even me, I know that I could never have sat down and be writing it. When I gave the vision book in those days to our pastors, that this is what God wants us to go and do. Everything written in it. They said, where did you get this? Including the name. I said, I didn't know, but I know I heard God that this is what he's sending us to go and do. It's a God-given mandate. Number two. Jesus' mission, number one of it is to bring good news to the poor. He was very sure that this vision was going to bring good news to the poor. It was for anybody who was in penury, for anybody who does not have, who lacks, said this vision, this mission that I carry is going to bring good news. And I know that if for every one of us here, any one of us here listening to me physically or on the digital platform, if you are following Jesus, you must have a way that the mission of Jesus must be giving you good news every single day, momentarily. Amen? That is the gospel of Jesus that we share. If you are not experiencing good news on a daily basis, there's something wrong somewhere. And that is what, for me to say to you, you must expect it. In fact, the best way to expect good news, the, the best way to have good news, is to expect good news. If you don't expect it, they don't come. 
You must expect good news every day you wake up. Expect good news. Say with me today. today. This, week, this week, I expect good news. Expect good, news. good news flow towards me. Flow towards they meet me on my way. I meet them on, my, on their way. In the name of Jesus. Expect good news. It's part of the mission. If you say you sign up with Jesus, you must know that it is one thing for you to expect. Good news. When it comes to Kingsborough, we know, as we wrote down in the mission statement, that this mission is to connect people to their God-given purpose. How does it tally with good news? It is important for you to know, we realize, and I personally realize over the years, that there's nobody that God made that does not have a purpose. No. Everybody has a purpose. In fact, there's nothing that God made that doesn't have a purpose. Even nothing that God made eventually had a purpose. In Genesis chapter 1, he says, everything was empty, dark. And he says, from that nothing that was empty, that was nothing, he says, let there be. Mm-hmm. Nothing is useless when you talk about God. Say with me, I am not useless. I, not I can never be useless. I, never I have a purpose. I have a, I have a destiny. I, have a I will live my destiny I will fulfill it in my lifetime. Amen. Amen. It is something you must know. That is why when you walk into this house and this household of faith, what we want you to see is that we have been waiting for you. There is something about you that all of us might not have been able to do. We will be, we've been waiting for you. That's why we encourage you we try and direct you not to come in and sit down, cross leg, and fold your arms. Because there's something that is in you that you carry that you can be used for everyone. That plays a part of everything that God has given. Number three. Jesus' mission says he's come to comfort the brokenhearted. You know, when somebody is brokenhearted, they are very, very difficult to console. A brokenhearted person is an extreme state of disappointment. Extreme state of disappointment whereby nothing seems to make sense anymore. So, when Jesus said, I have been sent to comfort them, he says, it's like, I have been sent to give them a reason not to give up, finally. What makes a man to decide they're going to jump off the cliff and kill themselves is because they're brokenhearted and they've given up about about the future. You will not give up about your future. Your future is too important for you to give up on. I want to challenge you that if you will allow the Jesus comfort to come over you, to wrap around you, to shield you, to guide you, to direct you, like the choir were singing earlier on, if you allow yourself to be reinformed and re-energized, to say hello, to, f- to joy, to peace, to strength, and to hope, you find out that you will see the comfort and the loving arms of God give you a direction about what beautiful future 
is laid ahead of you. In the mission of Kingsborough, equating to comfort, Will is saying that we are here and not just to connect people to their God-given purpose, we're here to equip people with biblical principles and tools that will make every one of us to develop our, pot our potentials. I certainly know that this, I'm not as good as this when we started off 21 years ago. How many remember 21 years ago? I think Christine can remember. Yeah? You can remember 21 years ago. If anybody doesn't really pass it, you can remember. It was a journey. A journey. 21 years ago, I don't speak as good as this. 21 years ago, okay. Yeah, in a sitting room. In a sitting room. With the creamy carpet, you know. Remember the creamy carpet? After you left, we quickly swept our, our floor. Because it was a cream carpet. We didn't want it, we didn't want it dirty. But it eventually got dirty. <laughs> There's a journey. Every one of us needs to know that we can become better. We can be trained to be better. How you came does not matter. It is what you're going to become that matters. God always said to us, Jesus invites you, come as you are. But he always say, don't, don't come to stay as you are. When you come as you are, allow for God to mold you. To shape you. To re-engineer you. Because that's what he does for all of us. Equip us with biblical principles. All the principles we go to school to learn, we go everywhere to, to, to be taught of, they were all written in the Bible. Formed in the Bible. So, as part of that, the last of the mission of Jesus that is stated there is that he came to declare a time of favor. That this time that I am here for you and with you is a time of favor where you experience even the impossible. The impossible. And if you use that and equate it to the vision of this house, I want to remind you. It says, after we've been connected, equipped, and deployed, I mean, and, and uh, we've been connected and equipped, lastly, we're going to be able to be deployed. Deployment to make positive changes. Listen to me. There is a lie the enemy has told about you. There's something that the enemy has said concerning you that you cannot make any contribution to anything good. You've been so told that nothing good can come out of Jerusalem or out of Nazareth. You've been so told that mm, you are not the kind of people that can make a difference. Because of so many reasons, and they have legitimate reasons, factual reasons. The background you had, the, peop, the things that you have experienced. So because of that, you should just don't bother. But Jesus is saying to us that there is a favor that is rested upon you. There is a favor that God has brought all over you. That will make you to become deployed to the one that can make positive impact everywhere that you go in the name of Jesus. For this impact to be made upon our lives, having gone through 20 years and seen where we are today, if you look at it and look at the outcome, there is a statement I'm going to read to you literally from the vision statement of Kingsborough. It's the last statement there. It says, ultimately, ultimately, we aim to become a global center of excellence for citywide 
social economic transformation. It's been there from the very onset 21 years ago. We're not just here to be connected to our God-given purpose. We're not just here to be equipped. We're not just here to be deployed. But we see ourselves being used by God to becoming a global center of excellence for citywide socioeconomic transformation. What I want to say to you as I close is that if we must follow all that God has said to us, if we must follow all that God wants us to do, we must be ready to follow the, follow the pattern just like Jesus did. Jesus did and followed his mission, which brought about that if they will follow him in righteousness, he says in their righteousness, they will rebuild ancient ruins. They will repair cities that are destroyed. They will revive cities and bring life back into them. In the same way, we are saying, if you will follow and walk in accordance to the vision of this house, that God will make you a center, a global center of excellence and citywide impact for social economic transformation. That's why we would believe and we trust that this year will be a year of new horizon for you and I. A year of new horizon wherein God is going to re-engineer each and every one of us. Not just to build, rebuild our lives, but to rebuild the cities Amen. through our hands. Amen. Amen? Let's read from Psalm 69, verse 30, 35. Psalm 69, verse 35. It says... For God will save Jerusalem. God wants to save Jerusalem. He's made up his mind. I'm going to save Jerusalem. But for a purpose. He says he will save Jerusalem and rebuild the towns of Judah. His people will live there and settle in their own land. Amen. Amen. God is saying that he will, re he will save you. He will save me. But then he will use us to do what? He will use us to rebuild the cities of Judah so that we may dwell there and possess it. Amen? Amen. God wants us to possess this land for his own purpose. He wants us to possess this land for his own glory. The communities are changing here and there. The landscape is changing here and there. But he's waiting for the mandate of the fact that every one of us has a mission that God wants to carry out through our hands on a daily basis. Amen? This is why, as we conclude today, as we conclude the fast, you must know that every day you appear in church, every day you appear here in Zion, every day you come into Kingsville here, you appear before God because you are being saved for a purpose. You are being saved for a reason. You are being saved for something that God wants to carry out. God is at work in you. Say with me, God is at work in me. God is at work in my family. God is at work in my career. He is at work in my health. He is, by, he is at work in my finances. And God is saying to you that as he is at work in you, he is saving you and building your life and turning you into city builder. You are a city builder. God is using you to transform you into a new horizon where you are not just building your own little life, you become an instrument to be used to build a societal value. Amen? My prayer for you as we close is to remember that prophetic declaration. That your potential, my potential, is far more and beyond our current situation. It's far more and beyond what we can see now. 
But today we'll make a decision. We'll make a decision to embrace the journey with God. We'll make a decision to embrace the journey with the Holy Spirit to a better version of who he wants us to be so that we can walk in dominion and authority according to God's will for our lives. Amen? I want us to rise up and I'm going to just pray and ask that God will release upon us even in the mandate of that grace that God has given to us on this day that God will release upon us that understanding as spelt out in the mission of Jesus to us in Isaiah it says that God has sent us to become a household that will bring about good news into our generation Father Lord let's just pray Father God we come before you today we ask of you in the mandate of the Son of God in the mandate of the grace and the Holy Spirit and the grace upon the word that we read today Father God we ask that Lord from today even on this landmark day of experience I ask oh God that you release upon your people release upon your people oh God the grace for good news Amen. the anointing for good news Amen to bring about upon their lives that they may impact on the on those that are around them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That wherever you go, you will be you'll be good news to anyone that encounters Amen. you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Not only you will you be good news, I pray and decree over you that you will bring comfort. Amen. Comfort to the brokenhearted. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every system and structure that you come in contact with will experience the comfort of, of, of the Most High God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I decree over your life that God will use you to, br to bring about the proclamation of, 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 of the release of the captives in the name of Jesus. Amen. That those who are bound shall be set free, shall be released from their bondage in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree over you today that by the mercy of God and by the anointing of the word of God, I decree that over you, that God Almighty will release over you that you shall not mourn in this year. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. for those who might have an area that, is, that they might be mourning at this time, that they are in one way or the other circumvented, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will give you a crown of beauty. Amen. A crown of beauty for ashes, oh God, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every downtrodden, I pray and I decree that God will give you a covering, a covering of beauty, an oil of joy, Amen. instead of mourning, a joyous blessing a joyous spirit, a joyous grace in the name of Jesus. I pray over you today that God will give you the spirit of praise in the name of Jesus. Rather than despair, you shall live in praise all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. In, the, in, the, in your gift of righteousness and the pursuit of holiness, I decree over you, you will be like a great oak tree in the name of Jesus, Amen. in which the Lord has planted, Amen. you will grow and grow beyond your horizon. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. it shall be well with Amen. you. You will be a rebuilder Amen. of ancient ruins. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you, O God. We honor you. We give you praise. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Please have your seat and God bless you.